Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Hope you guys have been enjoying, enjoying my latest videos. Uh, I did one with the Alan Horn retirement and I talked about the strike that's probably going to happen or at least it still seems like it's going to happen. Uh, we don't, I still don't, we don't know the status of things just yet, but I heard they're possibly altering the, the strike soon, so we'll see what happens. Um, I want to kind of clarify all my points on the strike video because I think that's some of the I think some of the things I said might have might be taken out of context. I am all for the strike. I just want to make that clear. I am not against the strike. I think that everyone needs to be paid fairly. They need to get paid, uh, and you know you shouldn't have to suffer on a film set. Um, you know that that should not be allowed at all. And uh, I'm all for it. What I was addressing was mainly understanding the environment that you're walking into. You know, uh, from a budget from a budget point of view, from and within that the studio's uh, point of view, that's all I was bringing up um, because there is that reality that I think people need to you know address. Um, but but all the stories I've been hearing from union from like reading articles and you know just YouTube videos of union members and what they've been you know been going through, it's completely unacceptable and you know they absolutely absolutely you know need to go on strike so hopefully it happens or they come the, the studios you know cave and they they try to work out a deal uh but we'll see what happens so so yeah i'm all for the strike i just want to make that clear um and uh i hope that all those union members are uh, get what they deserve so but let's talk about dc fandom because that just happened uh, all four hours of it. Oh my god. Uh, did you guys sit through all that? Because I did. Uh, I, I, I got up around eight in the morning and uh, I just started watching it because I, I kind of forgot, honestly, that DC fandom was happening today. And I, I told myself, all right, well, there's going to be there's gonna be some, some stuff probably that's shown. So let's just watch it. And I thought, honestly, it was going to be like an hour, or not an hour, like at least like two hours. So I was like, eh, yeah, done by noon, that's fine. It went on for like four hours, and I completely forgot that the, because, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't last year's DC fandom get split into two days? Like there was a, the first day was all about their film stuff, and then their second day was dedicated to their television programming. I didn't realize that they put it all together. Uh, for this one, so and uh, I think that was a very a very poor choice in my opinion because it was long, <laughs> like really really long. Uh, and I got tired. I got pretty frustrated pretty quickly because I was just I was wanting to get to the film stuff. That was just what all I cared about because a lot of their television programming. Besides one of them, which we'll discuss later, the the Peacemaker show. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, other than that show, all the other stuff that they showed, I could really care less about. I'm not. A, I haven't watched Titans, and I don't feel like I'm going to watch Titans. The Naomi show looks. It does not look good. At least that clip that they showed, not good. Especially from a technical point of view, it looked pretty cheap. So. Um, I have not watched the Harley Quinn show, so I'm not going to watch the Harley Quinn show. I've not seen Doom Patrol. I'm not going to watch Doom Patrol. So all these shows I just don't care about. And then they also address their comic book stuff, which I should have expected because it's DC. Um, so, but they dragged that out dragged that out for a long, long time. I'm pretty sure they dedicated more time to television stuff and the comic book stuff than their film stuff. Um, and I feel like that's kind of not understanding your audience enough you know if you're gonna do dc fandom majority of the people that are coming in to watch dc fandom are in it to watch that all the uh the big notable stuff like if there was a big dc show coming out like if justice league did a tv show and if it was on everyone's radar and everyone was excited for it that should be the big thing that, that you're marketing um, or the big thing that you're showing at uh, dc fandom um and the big things that people were talking about in the world of DC, I mean, yeah, they were talking about some comic book stuff, like they addressed the Superman uh, bisexual uh, thing, which, by the way, you know, if you have an issue with that, 
why. I mean, it's just trying something out, trying something new with Superman. There's nothing wrong about Superman being bisexual. That's completely fine. It's not even Clark Kent. It's Superman's son. So I don't understand the backlash for it. I think it's just a bunch of people who are just like, cannot accept change in their comic books. And, you know, it, it's, I don't know. I, I never understood the backlash for it. I, it's just a bunch of people just like, it's, that's not my Superman, you know, that, that type of mentality. Um, yeah, it really isn't your Superman. <laughs> the Superman you know is Clark Kent. This isn't Clark Kent. This is his son. So they can do whatever they want. You know, even if Clark Kent himself was bisexual, I welcome it. I, you know, I absolutely welcome it. Um, you know, uh, I can, uh, how do I say it? Uh, I can understand it. I can understand, I can understand that, that, that point of view. Just, just saying. So, not making the big deal out of it, not saying anything, I'm just saying, I understand. So, um, so, I can understand, and I can understand, and I can understand why they want to do it, because it's something new, it's something different, and it's not trying to just have the sun be Superman the way we know Superman, you know? If the sun was going to be Superman, I expect, I expect a new Superman, and that's what they're doing. They're presenting a new Superman through his sexuality, so why not? That's, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a cool thing. I really do. I think it's a cool thing. So, um, but in any event, let's move on. Uh, that was like the big backlash that I was hearing for like a few days about Superman being bisexual. I was just like, I don't understand it. I really don't. And that's not because I can relate to it. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to present a bias here. I'm just saying that like in any event, I'm just like, or in any scenario, it's like, I don't understand why there's so much hate towards this. It's just a new Superman who's trying, they're, they're just trying to give some distinction for this new Superman. And also welcoming more LGBTQ voices and having more relations, op more expanded relations relations with Superman. You know, no one has an issue with, 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 with a black Superman. You know, we have two black Superman coming out. We have one in the film and then we have one in television coming out. So it's like, no one has an issue with that, but we have an issue with Superman being bisexual. I don't know. That just seems, there's no consistency here. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's weird. I'll just say that. It's weird, weird, uh, weird backlash when that all happened. So I'm glad that DC fandom, uh, addressed it. So, um, so, and I don't take that personally. Let me just make that clear. Just because I, I can relate to this Superman, um, that does not mean that, you know, I take, you know, the the negativity, like, on a personal level, because I kind of, it kind of seems that way. It's like, oh, it's just because since you can relate to the Superman, then, you know, you're, you, you know, like, are you trying to protect it just because he's bisexual and all that stuff? I'm like, no, I'm just protecting the, the, I'm protecting just the idea of doing change, you know? Like, I don't want to see the same Superman every time. I want to see something different with Superman with, throughout the generations. I don't want to see the same identity all the time, you know? Like, they also change Superman's uh, morals. I think that that, I don't know why people are having, no, have, like, if people are going to have issues with, super, with change in Superman, no one's making a, a stink about Superman's not being, you know, uh, protecting the American dream, all that now. Now he's just, you know, being you know, fighting for truth and justice, you know, so no one has an issue with that, but we have an issue with Superman being bisexual, you know, again, no consistency here, so, I don't know, it's very strange, very, very strange, in my opinion, um, so no, it's not because I can relate to it, it's because I just don't think it's, I just don't understand why people can't accept, I mean, you can have a problem with it, don't get me wrong, I mean, I, if you don't like Superman being bisexual for, like, like, how do I say it? Like, if you don't like Superman being bisexual for different reasons beyond just, you know, you know, him not being masculine, you know, because that's very, how everyone views Superman as a very masculine figure, or I don't know, like, if you have a problem with, like, if there's anything beyond 
his sexuality that you have an issue with, I can understand that. But if it's just the sexuality portion that you have an issue with, and if it's just because he, he's bisexual, I don't know. I, I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. And, and again, it's not because I can relate to it. I, I could I could be something else and I could still have that same thought, you know, so it's, I don't know. It just seems a, bit, a little weird to me, but, but anyways, let's move on from that. Uh, I dedicate like 10 minutes to that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I just, I just hate when people can't accept change. I, I'm hypocritical because I sometimes have a hard time accepting change in my own life. Um, but, um, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's just weird. It's just weird how some people just can't accept change and, and just accept that. Okay. That's, it's a comic book character, guys. Just remember, it's a comic book character. So, uh, it's a fictional character. So, you know, it's just, it's just funny. It's just funny. So, but, okay, let's get into the, uh, the film stuff, all the film stuff that they talked about at DC Fandom. The, like, 10 minutes of dedication that they gave to DC, to the, to the films, because, again, like, four hours of this, of, like, television stuff and, and, uh, comic book stuff, which, again, if you're a huge DC fan, I can understand why you probably got pretty excited by some of those announcements. I'm here only for the film stuff, so. Um, and they showed a few things, so I'm gonna go in no particular order. Um, let's see. Uh... Let's talk about Black Adam. Uh, Dwayne Johnson's uh, film. They showed a teaser, and I think that I think they showed a sizzle reel. I forget. Um, but we're mainly going to talk about the teaser. Looks fine. Um, here's my worry, though. Um, the, the teaser gave me one impression, and I'm really afraid that this is what the movie's going to be like. Did anyone get the impression? Uh, or did anyone get the, uh, how do I say it? Did anyone watch the Black Adam trailer and think, this reminds me of The Mummy? Like, does anyone, did anyone get that? Just the way that it's set up, how the teaser's being set up? Uh, and they, just, just the idea of what Black Adam represents based off the trailer? I really hope that's not the case. I really hope that Black Adam is the main focus of this movie and that he's a, a legit villain, you know? Don't do a mummy effect where it's like this monster thing. And, you know, because I know that Hawkman, I think, I think that's what it is, Hawk, Hawkman is supposed to be in this. Um, so uh, that gets me worried that it's going to be more focused on Hawkman trying to fight Black Adam. And Black Adam is just the, the visual spectacle. You know, I hope Black Adam, I hope that they are actually focusing on Black Adam, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I get a, I get really worried that it's going to be like The Mummy. Um, Tom Cruise is The Mummy. When you walk into the, to the Mummy, you expect one thing, and that's sidelined, you know? Instead, we're focusing on Tom Cruise and a bunch of other people. So, I hope that's not what Black Adam is, but I'm getting that weird impression based off the trailer. So, we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but it looked okay. I mean... I mean, I know that they've been trying to do this movie for years um, because of all the DC shakeups that they've been trying. They've been trying to get this movie off the ground for a while. Um, I'm not really excited for it. I mean, it, I mean, I never got why people were so excited for Black Adam in, in the first place. It's like, oh, Dwayne Johnson's playing a superhero. I'm like, like he's not played any type of superhero type characters or has played characters that are invincible. You know, it's like I, we've seen that before. Like, just watch Skyscraper or Rampage or Jumanji. Like he's played this type of character before. It's just that he's now more villainous and actually has legit superpowers. So, um, I don't know. And The Rock's not a great actor either. So I'm, I mean, he's, he's been been improving. I'll give him that. He's been improving a little bit. Um, but he's not like you know, I'm not like. Ooh, you know, like I'm not like wowed by him. I just, you know, he, he's passable in my opinion. Um, but I don't know. I'm just not really that excited. I mean, 
I'm also hypocritical because I'm going to go see it. Um, but uh, my excitement level is pretty low. So um, a lot of people seem to be excited about it, though. I just, I don't know. Nothing in it really, nothing really catch me, really. So, or really ca caught my attention. So, yeah. So, yeah. It, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it's not like The Mummy. That's my... I'm really worried that that's what the movie's gonna end up being like is the mummy, so hopefully not. Hopefully not like that. So we'll see. All right. Uh, let's see what else is on the list. Uh, let's get to Peacemaker. I just talked. I addressed it earlier. Um, this is the only TV show I'm gonna talk about because, like I said earlier, the all the other TV shows I can care less about. I can care less about Flash now having golden boots. I can care less about that. <laughs> I'm only here to talk about Peacemaker in terms of television. Um, by the way, on The Flash, that Flash show, that has to go. Um, they're, what, eight seasons into it, and I think they've lost, like, some of their main cast members. And from what I've heard from people who watch the show, I've heard it's just, like, at this point, it's just kind of dead. So um, I've only seen, like, the first season, I think, and then I kind of dropped off from it. Um because anyone who loves CW will, will agree with this. The CW shows are not well budgeted. So they're very, very uh, confined and limited to how much they can do on a visual medium. And The Flash is all about visuals. So it's, you know, um, it's, uh, I don't know, I need good VFX to, to be invested into something that really requires a lot of VFX. And speaking of The Flash, we'll get into another VFX-related thing in a second. Um, but if, you're, if your whole uh, story revolves around visual effects, and if they're not well-polished VFX, then it is really hard for me to get into that type of story um, if the if it just doesn't look that well well made, or if, the, or if they're not that well-refined. So... Um, but anyway, let's talk about Peacemaker. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the Suicide Squad. Um, I I enjoyed it um, enough. I, uh, I I don't think it was as great as people make it out to be. I'm just not a big fan of James Gunn's humor. Um, uh, just it doesn't make really get me. I mean, it's it's entertaining, but it's not anything that's going to make me laugh. Um, so. Um, and uh, I didn't really love Peacemaker as a character. I mean, I, he he was he was likable in some respects. I thought John Cena had some decent moments in the film, but I wasn't really like, oh yeah, this this character, you know, this character needs a show. If any character that needs a show, it's Ratcatcher. I thought she was the best thing of that movie, so I don't understand why she's not getting a, getting a series because her character has a lot of a of a backstory and i think that that i think that she de definitely deserves a short a show way more than than peacemaker um but i actually think that they kind of justified it in the in the trailer i think that the trailer actually looks a, a little promising um still has the gun james gun humor that i'm not really a big fan of um there does seem to be some fun action pieces there and there and uh John Cena is like a hit or miss for me all the time. Like, uh, like he's sometimes he knows how to hit with. Sometimes he knows how to hit with humor, and then a lot of other times it just doesn't land as well. Um, so it's kind of like this a lot when I was watching him in the trailer. I was just like, some some of it's working, some of it's not. Um, so it looks promising. It looks promising. Um, I don't know if this is a limited series or if this is going to be an ongoing series. I hope it's limited series. Um, but, um, yeah, it looks promising. And correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't James Gunn say that he was working on something else for DC? Surprise if DC Fandom didn't announce that. I'm pretty sure it's Suicide Squad 2, but I didn't, I'm surprised they didn't make that announcement that, hey, we're working on the Suicide Squad 2, you know. Kind of surprising that they didn't announce that. Um, but yeah, the Peacemaker show looks, it looks okay. So, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a watch, but I don't know. 
I just wasn't a big fan of the Suicide Squad, so the trailer the trailer did win me over a little bit, just because I think the I think that just the layout of what the show is wanting to do and uh, some of the action pieces and and such it 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 interests me. So, but again, John Cena is a bit of a hit or miss for me. So a little fifty fifty on that show, but we'll see. Okay. Okay, now let's get into some of the uh, some of the other stuff. Um, should I just go to the tra other trailers? Um, we'll save them for last, actually. Uh, we'll just, just we'll just get through this real quick. The sizzle reels that they showed for Aquaman two and Shazam two, uh, they were okay. I mean, the Aquaman one didn't really show anything. Again, the, the scissor reels don't really show much to begin with. Scissor reels are just pretty much there to just say, hey, we're working on it. So, um, you know, it's nice to see the cast, you know, having fun and all that stuff. But um, in terms of anything noteworthy, nothing really. I mean, in the Aquaman one, we get to see, like, I think an updated costume for Black Manta, which looks good. I don't like that purple suit that Jace Momoa has has on, or whatever that black purple thing is. I don't like that. I think that that looks kind of odd. Um, so I hope that's not like the new Aquaman suit. I hope it's just like some suit that he wears for like a section of the movie and not for the whole movie. Because I kind of dig the classic Aquaman suit that he rocks in the in the first movie. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the first Aquaman movie though, but so. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, it looks. I mean, not looks. I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested because I didn't hate the first Aquaman movie, um, so I, I am curious to see what Aquaman two does. Um, but at the same time, though, it's like it's like the same thing with Black Adam. It's like, eh, I mean, I'll if I see it, I see it. Um, but I'm not like. I'm not over the moon for him. So, same thing for Shazam too. I really enjoyed Shazam though. I really enjoyed Shazam a lot. I think Shazam is the second best DC film that they've done lately. The, my first being you know, Wonder Woman. Um, so you would think I'm excited for Shazam too, but not really. Um, I don't know. I just everything I've been hearing about Shazam too, and just just in general, just the sizzle reel and all that stuff. I don't know. It just didn't really get me that excited. So, I need to see a trailer, so maybe a trailer will change my mind, but so far I'm just kind of, eh, eh. I mean, Helen Mirren being the villain is pretty nice, so that might be interesting, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm kind of, I don't know how to feel about that, so we'll see. Hey guys, sorry, I had to go do something real quick. Uh, where will we be at? We we're talking about the the sizzle reels, yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's get into some of the other stuff. Uh, I want to talk about the Blue Beetle or Batgirl. I'm looking at my phone just for reference. I'm not gonna look at the talk about the Blue Beetle or Batgirl thing because really they were just pointless to be there. They just were basically saying like we're working on it, and they showed some concept art, which you know, concept art and the actual film look are are very different things. So. You know, I'm not going to say that, oh, the concept art looks amazing, because, you know, I just, the film looks are very different compared to the concept art, so I'm not going to really say much. But the concept art for Blue Beetle looked interesting, but again, I, that's, that is, that is saying that just the art itself looks good. That's not saying that the film look is going to look good. It's going to, it could be very different, so, so I don't know. Um... Because I'm trying to get to the last two things, but uh, this DC League of Super Pets, I mean, does anyone care about that? Um, I mean, it, it, the cast seems interesting, but um, but the, the teaser, there wasn't much there. Um, other than that, oh yeah, well, one thing with the Batgirl thing, um, I, with the when they were talking about working on Batgirl, apparently it's a, an origin story. Uh, I'm not really digging that, if that's the case. I don't want her to have red hair also. I think that that's not a good idea. Um, so do away with the red hair because, you know, looking at Leslie Grace and just seeing how she looks, I don't think red hair would suit her at all. 
So do away with the red hair. Just do natural hair. Um, so, um, but apparently it's an origin story. So I don't I don't know how to feel about that. I would much rather do like a Spider-Man Homecoming type thing where she's already Batgirl and we just kind of get to know her through that, you know, versus versus having an origin story for Batgirl. So, so, so yeah. Um, is there anything else? I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, so let's get into the nitty gritty, the two big things, and then after that, I gotta eat dinner. So, um, let's talk about The Flash. They did a teaser trailer for The Flash, or at least like a first look of sorts. I was surprised. I didn't think they would do a teaser. I thought they would just do a sizzle reel, but apparently they're do they brought out a teaser. Um, an unfinished teaser, because uh, if you look at the VFX, they're clearly not done. Um, I did not like the look of the of the cow, um, uh, just practically speaking. I did not like the look of the cow on Flash. I think that it looks pretty like condensed, um, and the ear there's no like ears or anything. Like, it just looks I don't know. It didn't look that great, and I don't like the look of the actual full CG flash too. I don't like that at all. I think that, I think, well, okay, there's some features that I like. I like the muscle tones on the shoulders and the leg details. I don't like the fake abs. I don't like that. I don't like the fake abs. It looks like a muscle suit at that point. I don't like that. Um, and I know that most, uh, most like superhero suits are muscle suits, but I, it looked, it looked very noticeable as a muscle suit. That's what I mean. Um, so, uh, but the Michael Keaton elements, that got me excited, because I love Michael Keaton's Batman. Hearing Tim Burton's theme, that was pretty cool. I also have to say, aesthetically, like, visually, kind of cheap. Uh, a lot of these shots don't seem, um, they don't seem like, how do I say it? It felt like a television show, in terms of just their their shots it didn't seem like a film um like it, it felt like something that would fit in in tune with the with the uh with the shows you know the cw not the cw shows but just in general like a television show um so i hope that they're still refining a little bit because i don't know it just didn't look like i hope there's like widescreen that's what i'm saying because a lot of just the, the blue the blow, blown up picture it doesn't really look that great but if you put it in the widescreen it might actually look a little bit better because um, I don't know just a lot of the shots didn't seem like that there was a lot of thought put into them it just felt like all right I guess we need to do a shot here and a shot there but it didn't really feel like that there was a lot of huge thought that was put into the visual medium of just oh yeah we can need to do this we have to do that and we have these shots mean this and that for this purpose because someone said it best to me uh, when it comes to making movies every shot counts and every shot has to have a, a purpose. You know, even if it's a small thing, it has to have a purpose there. Because if it doesn't have a purpose there, people will notice. And for me, it just feels like a lot of the shots in the Flash teaser just felt kind of pointless. So, um, or at least it just didn't have a much, lot of meaning behind it. Um, besides the stuff at the end, like the Batman thing, like when we see the back of his cow, that's a cool shot because it's revealing Batman. Or uh, some of the tight close-ups on, or some of the uh, the mediums on Ezra Miller and the, the Supergirl thing, you know, all that stuff's like kind of neat because it's a step. There are there are purposes to those shots because you're getting to see these people, and then at the end with the tease of the Batmobile, that has that has merit too because you're unveiling the Batmobile. So, um, but a lot of the shots at the beginning it just felt like standard shots. I don't know. There wasn't a lot of huge thoughts that were put into those shots, in my particular opinion. But the teaser itself looked kind of neat. I mean, again, the Michael Keaton stuff looked cool. Ezra Miller is fine as Flash, so so I'm looking forward to it. Um, Andy Muschietti, who did the first It film and It Chapter 2. All right, all right. So we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm interested, I'm interested. And then we get to the Batman trailer. Uh, the new Batman trailer. Um, still very much excited for this movie. Um, I... I really am excited just because, again, like I was saying with The Flash, a lot of the stuff on camera looks like it has a big purpose. I mean, visually speaking, this looks really interesting. 
The score, in my opinion, is the best thing of the trailer. I love what Michael Giacchino is doing with the Batman theme. I think it's a very unique take on it. Um, Robert Pattinson's looking pretty solid. Uh, there was one line delivery that was not really good, in my opinion. It's when he's, like, talking to the Riddler, and he's just like, you know, what have you done? Like, when he pushes, he, like, punches a, one of the the glass thing or something, like, in the interrogation room. You know, that scene. Not really great with that line delivery, but in general, the besides that one line delivery, he looks pretty good. He looks pretty um, unhinged, so I'm pretty pretty excited to see what he does. Zoe Kravitz looks like your typical Catwoman in terms of just you know being sexy and also uh, being uh, seductive. You know, it's just like you know she's pr pretty much playing that typical Catwoman persona. And I dig it, you know? She's she's playing it pretty well. The standout in the trailer, in my opinion, is Colin Farrell. I love what he's doing with the Penguin. Um, cannot recognize him whatsoever. He's gone through a complete makeup transformation. And um, I love his exaggerated, like, gangster uh, attitude. It's really, really fun. Um, especially when he's, like, at the end of the trailer and he's, like, you know, pointing at, pointing up, you know, like, thinking that he killed Batman, he's like, I got you, you know, like, that whole little shtick, that was really funny, um, so, I was, uh, I was really digging his, uh, his, the performance that I was seeing in the trailer, it looks like he's having a, a lot of fun, so, I welcome that, that, that's a, that's different for Penguin, you know, because usually we see Penguin as, like, this little menace, or this, uh, uh, or this, uh, serious type figure, so I'm glad that we're getting a little bit of a, a fun side of Penguin while also being serious, you know? I, I'm glad that we're seeing a little bit more character besides just brute, you know? I'm glad that we're seeing more flavor, essentially, so. Um, and I'm really, I, I, I'm digging the atmosphere. I'm getting a lot of, like, like Blade Runner vibes. I'm getting a lot of, uh, uh, like, True Detective vibes, you know, some, uh, some Seven vibes as well, you know? I'm, di I'm getting a lot of like these noir flavors, which uh, which is pretty much what the Batman is trying to do, is trying to be this noir type piece, uh, focusing more on Batman's detective side than anything else. And the trailers, like from a visual medium, pre pretty much displays that pretty well. Um, my favorite shot in the trailer is when uh, uh, when Batman's taking all those bullets, um, just the orange or tint, you know, and the and the, and the light, the complete darkness, and you see Batman just walking. And all those bolts are just hitting him. Has not face whatsoever. Really dig that shot. That was really cool. And I love the practicality. I gotta say, I love that a lot of it's in camera. Obviously, there's a lot of there's a lot of CG also throughout the trailer. But I love like the end shot with the Batmobile flying out of the of the of the of the of the explosion. And it's a practical Batmobile. It's not CG. It hits the ground. You can tell it's practical. Um, really dig that a lot. So I'm glad that they're committing to some practicality. Um, digging the Batman costume as well. Looks looks pretty pretty sick, especially in some certain shots, like that dirt version of, of him. Looked pretty cool. So so yeah, I'm really looking forward to the, to the Batman. I'm really looking forward to it, especially with Matt Reeves behind it. Really enjoyed the last two Planet of the Apes films that he directed. So yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward to this. Definitely the best thing at DC fandom, in my opinion. So, so visually it looks awesome. The just, uh, just the narrative potential. Also, I'm very excited to see this take on Batman, an earlier version, more unhinged Batman. Uh, curious if it's gonna be rated R. Kind of very curious. It's probably PG-13, but curious if they're gonna lean harder to it, like an R rating of sorts. Kind of interested. So, so. But uh, that's pretty much it for me, though. I mean, DC fandom in general was just, it was long. I mean, it was really, really long, guys. Um, like, in general, like, there was, like, 10 minutes of things that I liked. So, um, so I mean, if you're a DC fan, you probably enjoyed a lot of it. But as a general just film fan, or in just, you know, I like DC a lot. I love DC. But I don't read comics. I don't watch the television stuff. And they committed... A lot of their time to that stuff and I just could care less about that stuff so um, so for me DC fandom mostly this year was kind of a, a snooze but when it got to the film stuff some of it the Batman one I thought was the best thing 
because that actually got me fairly excited. The other stuff though, I'm just like, eh, we'll see. The flash, lo the flash stuff looked interesting, but the rest of it was just kind of a meh for me. So, so yeah, those are my thoughts on DC fandom, and uh, you guys, let me know your thoughts on it. Did you guys enjoy DC fandom? Did you guys think it was too long? Like seriously, four hours? Like I, just in general, if you're a DC fan, did you enjoy sitting there for four hours? Like if you're a hardcore DC fan, did you enjoy sitting there for four hours straight? I don't know. Like you guys, let me know. But that's pretty much my thoughts on DC fandom. I thought in general the event was kind of boring, but when they got to some of the stuff that I was looking forward to, some of it looked okay. Some of it looked interesting. Again, the Batman stuff looked kind of interesting, and the or no Batman stuff looks looks fun. What am I talking about? Um, the Flash stuff seemed interesting, and then they got to one thing that I thought looked fairly fairly good, and that was the Batman. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. Just it's kind of in general, DC fandom was meh in my opinion. And then there were some some decent nuggets, like I said, the Batman thing and the Flash thing. I thought were the two. One of them was pretty good, and the other one was like, eh. So, um, so two interesting things to come out of it. The rest was like, went from meh to I'm not interested at all. So, but yeah, those are my thoughts on DC fandom. You guys, let me know your thoughts on DC fandom. You guys, enjoy the event, the event in general. Did you guys enjoy all the the stuff they showed. You guys, let me know. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Uh, I'm not sure what the next video will be. Probably gonna do a throwback review for something. I'm not going to say what, but um, but uh, all I'm going to say is I'm going to be watching a film that's getting me prepared for another film coming out soon. I think you guys probably know at this point what it is, but yeah, we'll probably do a review on that. So, um, But uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, review. Hope you got It's Dune. <laughs> why, 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 why hide it? It's Dune. It's going to be the 1984 uh, Dune film. We're going to review that film uh, in, pre in preparation for the, uh, the new Dune coming out. So um, I, don't, I was like, why, why hide it? Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. And uh, until then, I'll catch you guys in the Dune review. That's probably my next video. So yeah, until then, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me know your thoughts on DC Fandom. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys later.